guys, we are in Carleton, Michigan today. We are at Four Star Greenhouse, and this is another one of Proven Winners Display Gardens. And it is phenomenal. You guys are gonna love this. I have so many ideas now after walking through this garden just a little bit ago. Um, one of the things that I really wanted to um, just let you guys know about is that at these growing facilities, um, they do these test gardens to actually test the plants, to see how they do in the landscape versus containers, to try out new combinations for hanging baskets and, and pots and in-ground planting. And if something doesn't do well, it doesn't perform, it does not make the collection. Um, and I think that is really cool. Like these plants have to be superior plants to be part of the Proven Winners line. And to see them in action is just amazing. Another really cool thing that you guys are gonna like and I want a lot of are these pots. So these are self-watering containers. And I've always been a little skeptical of the idea, but I'm seeing it in action everywhere. They've got, I don't even know how many pots, but it seems like they have hundreds of them around here. So what they are is they're light, like this one doesn't have any water or very little water in it right now. Um, but I wanted to show you the inside. So it still has plenty, the plants have plenty of room to grow. They have plenty of root room. And then this part fills up with water and then the bottom as well. You fill it up from this little thing right here. This just screws out, put water in there. And then this little bubble has three little sensors that pop up just like uh, little floats and will tell you where the water level is at in your container. Um, so what they say is that it reduces your watering time down to about every three to four weeks. Like who wouldn't want that? I think that is such a great thing. And um, you'll see them all throughout the garden. So just kind of keep your eye open for them. This whole alley right here, which, ooh, the sun's behind a cloud. It feels nice. It is warm out today. They call this combo alley. They've got just tons of different beautiful combinations. Really awesome thing is that they label everything. Everything has a name. So you're walking through the garden and you actually know what you're looking at. Um, I can't stand it when I go to gardens and I can't ID a plant. It bugs me because it's usually one that I really would love to plant somewhere, uh, but I've got to go track somebody down and ask what it is. So this is really nice because they've got all of everything labeled. They even give you a little booklet when you arrive and it shows you all the areas in the garden and lists all the plants that are in that area. So you can easy, easily ID what you're looking at. So let's just walk down this alley, show you guys some of these things. I thought you would really like this one. I love this combination because everything, every single plant in here is so different um, in color or structure that it, everything shows up. So you've got your Black Eyed Susan vine, um, they call this one Lemon Appeal, um, Royal Super Tunia Royal Velvet, Super Tunia Mini Rose Bane, and White Licorice. See, they've got them all lined out there for you. But the um, Lemon Appeal wants to naturally grow upward, so you would think that when you plant this vine that it would naturally grow all the way down. And it starts to grow down, but then it starts climbing back up itself, and it will climb up the structure. But it gives a really neat look. They call this their octopus. <laughs> this is Dichondra Silver Falls. Look at this plant. It's like so soft. It is such a neat one. I've got to do this. Um, and so up top, we've got Infinity Red and Infinity White. These are impatiens here. And then the Dichondra. Isn't that the coolest thing? All right, let's keep on going. I'm seeing a really neat combination right at the end. Look at this. Isn't that just striking? That drew my eye from way down there. So we've got a dragon wing red, um, illustrious. Mm. This is color blaze dipped in wine. We've got diamond frost euphorbia. Yeah, that's a beauty. I'm gonna copy that one. And then they've got meandering paths that go through this whole thing, but you can look in almost every direction and you see just a beautiful island of color. Um, something I'm noticing in this garden and in the one in New Hampshire that we just came from, they use lemon coral a lot as a border plant. And um, we even had somebody comment on the last garden tour video um, of the, the Proven Winners Garden there in New Hampshire. They were asking what that plant was, and that's lemon coral sedum. And it makes a fantastic border. I really like it, especially with the black lace elderberry here. And the contrast between these two plants is phenomenal. And they, even the, the potato vine here. But doesn't this just inspire you to plant annuals everywhere? I mean, the color is insane. 
So this garden is open to the public, but they do have a lot of events going on during the summer, a lot of weddings, um, a lot of people come in here to take pictures and things. So if you do make the trip to come, I would recommend calling the office first to kind of make sure that your date that you want to come visit doesn't fall on one of the wedding dates because you don't want to come and crash a wedding. So They've got some really neat structures here too, just a little pergola here and then the swings. There's just so many opportunities for really neat structural plantings and for pictures. I mean, I, if I were needing pictures for something, this is definitely where I would come. Look at the view out here, and you can even see there's a family out there getting their pictures taken right now. So fun. The color is just amazing. Okay, let's go back this way. And look at all the pots, see them all? All of these self-watering containers, and they look really nice too. Kind of a neat thing about them, and I was wondering about this when um, when I very first was sent the link about these pots to kind of check them out, I was wondering about the, the texture on the outside. It's actually braille and it tells a story about the pots and uh, we're not sure what story it tells about the pots, but apparently it does. Kind of a neat, a neat deal, different. This is my color palette right here. The soft yellow, look at that with the canna. And then there's Pink Impatience, the Diamond Frost Euphorbia in white, the Agaratum right there. Beautiful Supertunia Latte. Oh, love it. Oh, the Cleome, there's white Cleome back there. Purple Fountain Grass. Like this just right here is just real cooling and calm to me. We'll go deeper into that area in a minute. I don't want to get in the background of the family's pictures, but you can see right here, the little pond, uh, they call this their reflecting pond under this bridge here, and then the little stream that brings it down. Can you hear that? So nice. I think this is the biggest pot I have ever seen. Also, right behind it, do you see that big pillar of supertunias? So I got in closer to see how that was all kind of configured, and it looks like it's four great big hanging baskets that are just hanging one right on top of the other, and there's drip irrigation in there, and Looks like they are loving it, and it's a really neat idea. And right below us, check this out. So there's this really pretty design of flowers with the stones, and none of these stones are painted. They're all natural colors, and they were all cut to fit this design. So it was a very custom-made piece, and I think it's really neat. It really adds something over here. There's a sign that says that I, you're not supposed to climb into the stream and I really want to. <laughs> it looks so inviting. Look at that. The grasses, the grasses just make it for me. They make it look natural. Um, and then of course, there's another black lace uh, elderberry up there. And when you're standing right where I am, um, you see that layer with the black lace elderberry and then there's a layer of hydrangea right in front. And then that uh, Prince Tut grass right there just really, really pleasing. You can tell there was a lot of thought that went behind this, this design in these gardens. I also like this area behind me. I love it when there's just big islands of color and they've made raised beds with some stone here um, and they're just full of different things. There's super benia, uh, sup super benia. I just said super benia. Ah, super benia royal romance. Um, really pretty potato vine and then of course the bananas and cannas. Um, but there's just some really nice things that break up what would have normally be a uh, big expanse of grass, like this pot right here. It looks totally great just sitting right here with another little one beside it. And I want the pot, the pot is awesome. Standing in the shade here for a minute is a really, really nice day. It's really warm. Um, this whole sidewalk is lined with a bunch of beautiful combinations. And I wanted to show you a couple. This one right here is such a neat idea. I've never thought of putting a gara as a centerpiece. But look at how that kind of crowns the whole planter. It's just this nice plume out the top. It's gorgeous. Also, um, this Pegasus begonia as a centerpiece is beautiful, along with the Artemisia and then the other things, Broalia and Terenia that's in that uh, mix is just really, really pretty. Of course, it's in the colors that I love, so I really like that one. So we'll just walk down this way and you'll see, like right along the edge, see all that just green? That's again the lemon coral sedum. It's just such a fantastic plant. The view. Also, they had this wall built because they've got a lot of production back behind here. Um, so they kind of had this barrier wall built, but they did it so pretty with the 
hanging uh, window baskets here, planter boxes, and then I love this drift of grass. See, that's what we all need to be doing is thinking in bigger scale. You know, it's, it just looks so striking when you plant a lot of one thing instead of a bunch of different stuff because it gives your eye some rest. Um, and it also makes the plant stand out big time. Um, so let's go look over here. Oh, that's so pretty. Hibiscus. And then right out here, um, they've got lots of different perennials, some gorgeous sedums. Um, I just like want to touch them. So, um, Nepeta and more sedum right here, which this is the Rock and Grow Maestro, I believe. I just used this in one of the containers that I used in one of my presentations yesterday. Really pretty, really great in a container for fall. Daylilies like a viburnum. Got a gorgeous spirea right here. Baptisia. Really pretty to see what you can do with mostly shrubs and perennials out here. There's a few little, well, the panziolas um, out here, which may or may not come back. Um, they are kind of half and half in our area. Um, but all of this right here, it looks like it's stuff that's going to come back. There's some Budlea and Rosa Sharon, um, some bigger hibiscus, hydrangea, um, just really nice. Out here you've got the Cleome and potato vine, um, more hydrangea, fine line buckthorns. If you guys are not familiar with this plant, maybe you should consider it. If you've got a space um, for something, you know, that you need something tall but narrow, the fine line buckthorn is a fantastic plant. And these ones are, boy, I can't remember. I think she said six, seven years old, something like that. So it just gives you a really good idea of what size they get, but what a great screening plant. Uh, I have one in a container sitting on my patio at home and it really like, I need to get more so I can do a little, little screen. It's really striking. And there's some more right down there. And then right here, really nice look at this bridge and they've got lights in it it's lit up at night and they used a lot of the uh, supertunia honey in this arrangement and then a super bells that i think is really pretty super bell spicy look at that it looks really great with the honey the honey's got kind of this graduation of color see this is both the supertunia honey right here look at that super bells with it really great combination okay so when you go over the bridge so on the other side of this bridge there's a chain uh, with private residence sign and that is where the owner's home starts so this is where the tour is going to end but there's still some pretty things right down in here um, one of the plants that i really like is this gomfrina the globe amaranth right here look at this look at how pretty and something that i just learned about these is that they um, I've always seen on the tag that they're a really great dried flower, but I've never tried it before. And apparently they dry the same color that they are now. So they don't lose their color when they dry, which is amazing. So really neat plant you can see right here. It's called Lil Forest Sugared Plum Gomfrina. I hope you guys enjoyed the tour. Again, this is Four Star Greenhouse. We're in Carleton, Michigan, which is really close to Detroit. Um, totally worth the visit. Thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you in the next video. Bye.